Hey tubers, it's me again. Hey, you know what? I just wanted to uh, help some of the newbies out there that um, I know I have a video in my repertoire that says like if you're gonna go out and find uh, a chainsaw that the first thing you want to do is pull the exhaust and to look inside and see what the piston and the rings look like and it's kind of a trademark saying and every and like yeah I mean the guys that have the experience like we know we know why but maybe some of the newbies don't so this is for you newbies it's like why do I why do I have to pull the exhaust and why do I have to look it's like well you know what okay so here is the piston and obviously it has two sets of rings and this came out of the 192 uh, Tango that I just repaired. But the significance of it all is, is like, well, why the exhaust? Well, first of all, on a two-stroke engine, after ignition, the exhaust is going to show the biggest thrust wear. T H R U S T wear. That's when the piston is actually being pushed down, and any little gap that's you know between the cylinder and the piston is going to make the piston kind of twist and want to want to go down sideways. <clears throat> okay, compression stroke does the opposite because the crankshaft and the connecting rod is pushing up at an angle so going up and going down like this if you can kind of understand it is so this would be the intake side and you can't really see it anyways if you were like to pull the carburetor off and look inside so it would look clean over here on the exhaust side you would absolutely see it now you're gonna say, well, zombie, why is it over here onto the side and not straight in the middle? Because the carburetor would intake right here and then the exhaust would go right here. That would be on probably 90% of the machines that you're working on that have got cross scavenging. That means the fuel mixture comes up the port this side, it comes in, fills the chamber, it combusts, and then it exit over on this side. Well, this piston happens to come out of a loop scavenged engine. That means the carburetor is over here, and then the exhaust is over here. That's why you see the majority of the wear over here and nothing over here. So, and what happens is like, there's always a gap and there's always space in the, between the cylinder and the piston, obviously because of heat, friction, blah, blah, blah. So it's the rings that do the majority of the work for holding the compression. Inside here, you're gonna see there's a dowel pin right there at the end of my thumb. And then they push them off to the side so that they don't line up. And there's another dowel pin over there. That's the best. Like if you can get like professional series, uh, Magnum series uh, engines that have got, you know, two rings on them. They're going to last a little bit longer as long as you take care of them. So, but what happens is, is like the rings will get stuck due to the wear. They won't be able to, they won't be able to come out and fit against the side of the cylinder. These ones still happen to be loose only because I freed them up after I took them out. But you can see... Taking, I put my thumb on there and I push the rings in. There's constant spring pressure on those rings to the uh, to the cylinder wall that holds the compression, you know, during uh, 
obviously during the, the compression stroke and then during uh, after ignition on the thrust stroke so that's why it, that's why it's important to take a look inside the exhaust to find out like what's going on you know with the the saw that you want to buy or the saw that you own or the saw that you're working on it's like that's a starting point if your compression is not where it wants to be or where it needs to be and it's just because and it's because of the rings and you need to replace the piston chances are you're gonna have to redo the cylinder but you know it's not super expensive especially if your labor is free to take and replace this this one I had to take and use a series of like pullers to get the the wrist pin over far enough to release it from the connecting rod but it's it's another one of those things maybe I should do a separate video it's once you do it once you know what you got to do and like then like the second time you'll do it faster the third time you'll be even faster and then you know, like by the fourth or the fifth time you're you're just at the, the point where it's like you know it's like you don't need to be gentle with anything blah 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 and, and you just kind of fly through them it's not rocket science it's it, it really isn't it's just like this this is one of the components that takes and makes that machine run and this is uh, this is a sacri the rings are the sacrificial piece the longer that the machine runs, the more that they will wear. Uh, they will expand. The gap between that dowel pin and the rings will get larger and larger and larger. It will allow more air uh, to escape down through here and then come over and then connect to the other, to the other dowel pin where the ring is compressed. This one's broken, you can see I'm missing a bunch of it focus but that the rings are the sacrificial piece you know like that's that's the trade-off is like to get the compression in order for the machine to run and to give it power so that it's not bogging you know when you're going through a 10 inch log or whatever is like it needs to be it needs to be optimal it needs to have the most compression that it can so you don't have to baby your motor but yeah the the rings are important the piston is what converts the uh, what do you call it uh, up and down motion to rotary motions via the connecting rod uh, the crankshaft hopefully you, you have a basic understanding of that but looking through there through the the exhaust port is going to tell you what's going on inside that engine so if you hold on one second let me grab that old um, cylinder and you'll see what cross scavenging and loop scavenging is like whoops sorry so this right here this is a cylinder on that 192 this is where the carburetor is attached and then if you look right over here there's the exhaust it's 90 degrees so what happens is the fuel goes in focus the fuel goes in it goes up like this it gets trapped it combusts and then